Alright, welcome back to my uh, next video in the tutorial series. In this one we're going to be creating a box 2D world. I'm pretty much going to stick to that because I like to keep these videos nice and short. Cuts down on upload time and download time, things like that. Um, plus they're easier to follow as a step-by-step -step deal. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we do, actually, let me explain this real quick. I added this code to the source code. You don't have to add this. This is specifically for me. I added it for the video so I don't have to drag it in my recording area every time I need to show you something at the end of the program or the video usually. Um, if you want to do this, you can do it, but you don't have to. Um, but for future reference this is how you can set the position of your window if you don't like how it randomly jumps around every time you build uh, this will keep it always building and then loading in that same spot every time uh, something I like to do I hate how they jump around randomly uh, so let's go ahead and get started let's add the box 2d uh, specific header and include box 2d.h and that's all we need for that then we can go and scroll down to right below set the sprites position above the game loop and we'll need to set up the world's properties then we'll need to create the size of the world and then we'll create the world First, we're going to need a boolean value called do sleep. Uh, this tells uh, Box 2D in the world uh, whether to handle the sleeping objects, ignore them, things like that. Um, next, we'll need a B2Vec2, and we'll name it gravity. And it's a vector, it's a two dimensional vector. So we'll set the x gravity to 0 and the y gravity to 9.8f. And then next we'll set the iterations uh, as an integer. So iterations equals 10. Uh, float scale equals 30. Um, float time step equals 1 divided by 60. And that's it for setting up the world's properties. Uh, next we'll create the world's size. So we'll need b2 a b b world a b b is what we'll call it and so world a b b lower bound dot set and we'll do negative 1000 divided by scale negative 1000 divided by scale and world a b b upper bound set 1000 divided by scale 1000 divided by scale. Alright, now let me break this down for you. It's a little confusing. Um, the number negative 1000, that's actually in meters. That's how Box2D does it. Um, I'll explain to you real quick. A meter in pixels is 30 pixels. So if we were to go negative 1000 meters, it's going to be negative 30,000 pixels, which is huge. Um, that's why I have the divi divisor of the scale. Uh, helps to helps me keep track of you know, how big my window is, where in the world I'm going to place things. Um, you can kind of mess around with it to try and figure it out uh, to get better at it. It took me a little while to get used to it. I'm still getting used to it. I haven't had that much time to really mess with the um, meters to pixels, especially lately. Um, but what we're doing, I'm creating, trying to create a decently large world uh, so we don't get some out of bounds out of range thing and our whole system crashes and we gotta figure out uh, what scale works so it keeps going on alright so oh and before I jump to um, this is also where it's confusing lower bound um, and upper bound oddly enough the lower bound is the upper left corner of the window uh, hence the negative thousand by negative thousand and then the upper bound is the lower right corner of the window so it would be over here and 
that's a thousand thousand, so it's in the positive. It's kind of weird uh, the way they named it. it. That's some of the stuff that makes it confusing. Uh, but now we'll need to create the world, so we'll go B2 world, name it world, and then, oops, and add an asterisk there. So now we'll go world equals new B2 world, and then we'll go world AABB gravity, whoops, do sleep, and that's it. The world is created it's pretty simple um, you won't notice anything different uh, it's kind of invisible it just kind of sets boundaries for the world and then it creates the world uh, next thing we're gonna get into is creating the objects uh, the ground that's gonna be static and then a dynamic object that will use one of our pre our previous box shape and then you'll get to see and we'll mess around with some settings uh, to show you how kind of cool box 2d actually is once you get it going and then uh, let's go ahead and hit F5 and run it. Make sure there's no errors. Uh, you do get a warning. Uh, LNK 4098 default lib lib CMT TD conflicts with the use of other libs. This has not impacted any of my programs. I've looked it up to try and uh, get rid of it. Uh, but considering the fact that it doesn't affect any of my programs, I've gone deeper into Box 2D and I've never had a problem with it. Um, I usually don't mess with it. it. It's nothing to really concern yourself with, uh, unless it's, you know, unless you have one of those A-type personalities you can't stand having a warning. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, if you want to try and figure it out, go ahead. Um, but that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and build this. See, it's in a. See, it's in my recording window now, so that's good, and everything still works right so uh, in the next tutorial like I said I'll be covering creating the ground and adding some objects and we'll get to see some stuff uh, coming up very shortly um, so that's it alright see you next time